Hi everyone, I've been working on a game, Fangs and Fate Solitaire, which by the way you can wishlist on Steam right now, and the main issue I encountered was that I wasn't able to click on overlapping cards without picking both of them up at the same time. Now I have tried a bunch of things, but in this video I'm going to show you what I consider are the best ways of handling this problem. Now let us first of all see how we got to this point. Well, our card is made out of an area 2D, which obviously has a collision shape, and two sprites to represent the back of the card and the face of the card. Now, this is an area 2D because it supports the input event signal, which basically can track if I clicked or not on the card. Now, if we go to the code, you'll see that what I'm doing is simply treating this event, and if the actual event was a mouse click, then I set an is dragging variable to true. Now, while is dragging variable is true, I'm simply updating the global position of the card so that the card follows my mouse position. Obviously, when the event action is released, I am going to set is dragging to be false. Now, the reason for which these behaviors are on separate functions is because I want to be dragging the card only after clicking specifically the card but I want to stop dragging whenever I'm releasing the mouse, no matter if I'm on the card or not. Because if I run the game, you'll see that if I'm on the edge, for example, if I move fast enough, my cursor is not going to be over the card and simply lifting the mouse button while not over the card would not normally trigger that event. Now, our issue comes from the fact that this on input event is going to be triggered on both cards. And to prove that, I'm simply going to print here. Now, if I press F5, you'll see that if I click on this region in which the cards are overlapping, you'll see here twice. Now, there are two ways of getting over this issue. The first way is by using a control node instead of an area 2D. So for that, let's simply make a new scene and let's make it a user interface scene and let's call this card control. And under this, we want to add the same things that we had before. So a sprite for the back, a sprite for the face. And obviously we no longer need the collision shape 2D as it was tied to the area 2D. So now I have to add instead a texture rect because this is a control node. And if I want to catch any kind of input on it, I need to also have something that extends a control node. So what I'm gonna do is simply have a texture rect instead of a sprite which pretty much behaves the same way. It's just that it extends control instead of a node to D. Now, these texture rects are going to be called the same way, back and face. And what I have to do is to simply assign values for these textures. So for the back, I'm going to put the back texture and for the face, I'm going to put the face texture. Now, what you might notice is that these textures are not centered here. So in order to center those, we can click on the control node. First of all, change is anchors to shrink and also go to the back one and change it to shrink and go to the face one and change it to shrink as well. And now if we want to put it in the middle, we can go to the control node and to layout and transform and we can reset the position and also reset the anchor preset to be top left and now everything is centered properly. Okay, but we are pretty much in the same spot as before. How does a control node shine where an area 2D didn't? Well, you see, the control node has a property called mouse. Now, basically what this does is that it has a filter which allows us to stop the event propagation of the mouse. So, for example, if the filter is set to stop, whenever I click on this card, the event is going to get consumed and not propagate to a card that is below this card. So then what I have to do is to simply create a new script for this control card. Let's call it yeah, cardcontrol.gd, that's perfectly fine. And I'm going to simply copy the whole script from here and paste it in here. And I will just do a few slight changes. First of all, I want to change this on input event because as you can see, I no longer have this event here. What I have instead is GUI input. So I'm going to connect GUI input. If, if, if my click works, uh, I'm going to connect this GUI input to the card control, click connect and simply copy and paste all the code here. And I'm going to remove this because I no longer need it. Okay, now I should also fix the indentation here and I should also make sure to not forget to change this from an area to D to a control node. And now if I go to my game, I can delete this area to D elements 
and replace them with the card control scenes, which are pretty much the same. Now I just have to update their textures. So back and special back and here red and special red. Okay. If I press now F5, you will see that clicking on this card moves it, clicking on this card moves it. And if I click on the area in between, you see that only the card above moves, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, of course, this solution comes with some caveats because otherwise I wouldn't be showing you a different solution. So the first issue that we have with this is that these cards are ordered in the scene from top to bottom with the bottom one being the first that is going to catch the event. So what happens then if we go to this first control card and we go to our ordering in the canvas item and we set the Z index of the card to be one instead of zero so that it appears like it is on top of the other card. You see, it's not actually on top because again, this second card is at the bottom of the scene tree, but it just appears like that. Now, if I press F5, you'll see that even though it seems obvious that this black card is on top, because the second card is at the bottom of the scene tree, it's going to be the first one that consumes the event. So if I click now here, you'll see that I still move the second card despite having this first card looking like it's on top. So you see, we have to be careful when working with control nodes because we cannot make use of the Z index. We have to instead change the position of the nodes in the scene tree. Now, one other thing to be careful about when working with control nodes this way is that we could have nodes that block the mouse input. So for example, if I add another child node and yeah, let's have it a texture rect, let's call this bat. And if I were to simply drag this bat image on top, yeah, make it maybe larger so that it's visible here, I don't know. Uh, this bat could be having the mouse filter to stop. Now, if I press F5, you'll see that I cannot drag my card if I'm clicking on this bat that has the stop mouse filter. Of course, I can drag it if I click on the corners where the bat is not, but this is going to obviously be an issue. So you always have to make sure that whatever you are adding to your control node has the filter to pass or even ignore. Now for the second solution, what if we could detect which areas our mouse tip intersected with? And after we detect those areas, we can simply select the area that is on top. Well, we can do exactly that by using an intersect point function. Now I have here a scene which is pretty much identical to the other card scene which had an area to D. And what I'm going to do is to simply comment out its dragging and click position because we want to decide which area is going to actually be dragging and not to let it work for every area. So first of all, how do we detect all the areas that we have collided with? Well, what we can do is to simply write var objects clicked. And in here, we are going to get the world in which we are in and use the physics of that world to see the point that intersected with our areas. So I'm just going to write get world to D. And if I click on the documentation of this, it pretty much returns the world to D where this item is in. And after this, I can click dot direct space state. Now, this direct space state, as I said, is going to simply have a direct access to the world's physics to the space state, and it's used for querying potential collisions. Now, if I go to this physics direct space state 2D, <laughs> you'll see that it has a few functions of which of interest is intersect point, intersect ray, and intersect shape. Now, because the tip of our mouse is going to be a point, we can simply use intersect point, but we could have used an intersect ray to detect a collision with a line or intersect shape to detect a collision with any kind of 2D shape. Now, if we go back, we can use the intersect point function. So intersect point, which takes a physics point query parameters to the argument. Now, what is this? This is just an argument that is simply going to configure how our point is going to behave. So let's just make one, let's call it var parameters and make this physics point query parameters to D and let's make this a new physics point query parameters to D. And what do we want to set to this point? Now, of course, the most important thing we have to set to this parameter is the position of the event. So what I'm going to do is to simply say parameters dot position is going to be equal to event dot position. So basically, 
the position of the point is where we clicked. Now, the next thing we want is to also have this point intersect with areas. And to do that, we can simply write parameters dot collide with areas equal to true. If I now copy these parameters and set it as the intersect point parameters, I can save. And just to see our progress, let us just print what the objects clicked are. So print objects clicked. If I print it like this, I can press F5. And you will see that if I click on this vampire, I have some kind of dictionary object which has a collider that is exactly my area to D here, that is the vampire. If I click on this priest, I get the card physics point simple, which is the other area to D. And if I click on both of them, you see I get this one and this one. Now, how do we only get the last one? Now, in these arrays, all we care about is the colliders. So let us make this arrays simpler by removing all the extra information that we do not need. In order to do that, I'm going to use the map function, which transforms each element of an array into a new element based on some kind of rule. So what I'm going to do is to simply write var colliders equals to what? To object clicked dot map. And in here, we have to write the function that we want to use in order to transform these objects. Now, of course, I could be defining this function somewhere outside, but since it's a simple function, I can use a lambda function, which is pretty much a function that is defined inside these brackets. So what I could do is simply write func, and each element of this array is going to be a dictionary, so I'm going to say dict, and we want from this dictionary to return only the collider. So I'm going to say return dict, dot collider. Okay, if we now print the colliders, I can write print colliders. If I press F5, you'll see I click on this and I only get the card physics point area to D. If I click on this, I only get the first one. If I click on both, I get both of them. Okay, now that we have everything that we clicked on, what we have to do is to only select the one that is on top. So how do we find out which one is on top? Well, there are multiple ways, but the way I want to go about it is to simply look at the card's Z index. So what I could do would be to set the Z index of this card to be zero. So if I go to inspector, I have here ordering and it is already zero and the Z index of this one to be one. So I'm going to set it to one and this is going to forever be above this card, no matter the order of our elements in the scene tree. If I now save, I can go to my script and in here, what I can do is to sort these colliders. And how do we sort the colliders? Well, it's very easy. We have a sort custom function. So we could simply do colliders dot sort custom. Just as before, we have to define a function that tells us how we are going to sort the elements in our array. So if we were to take two elements, how do we compare them? I'm going to simply write func c1 and c2 because two elements would be collider number one and collider number two. And when do we put collider number one to be first and collider number two to be second? Well, we do that when the Z index of collider number one is smaller than the Z index of collider number two. So I'm simply going to return c1.z index is smaller than c2.z index. And if that's true, then we are going to sort this accordingly. Now, if I were to print again colliders, you'll see that the second card physics point is always going to be the second one because we order them. No matter how many times I click on this, it's going to be the second one. Okay, but now that these are ordered, what we can do is to simply check if the last collider is the one that called this on input event. So what I can do is say if colliders of minus one, this is how I access the last element, equals to self, then we can finally set is dragging to true and get local mouse position to be this click position. And if I press F5, you'll see that if I click on this one, I can move it. If I click on this one, I can also move it. And if I click here in the intersecting area, I can only move this first one because of the Z index. If I were to go to this priest and change its Z index to, let's say, maybe four, you'll see that if I press F5, 
I can move this like that, I can move this like that, and if I press here, I no longer have the issue that I had with the control nodes because I can move it however I want based on the Z index. Now, of course, you don't have to use the Z index, you could use the order in the scene or you could use any order you wanted. Now, because of this flexibility, this is the solution that I went with in Fangs and Fate Solitaire and I had no issues with it. I would be very curious to see which solution worked best for you and also if there are any other solutions that you found which are even better than this one. So, it would be a huge help if you wishlisted Fangs and Fate Solitaire. Thanks a lot to my coffee supporters, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. See ya!